Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we've got Nightingale, released on the 21st of February. So it's not, not too old, it's got mixed reviews, but of course we love the negative ones. And then a lot of people have been talking about this offline play situation, and the devs have addressed that, so we'll go over that at the end as well. But yeah, let's dive right into it. Alright, so as you can see here, it's a bit of a long one. They reviewed this when they were at about 23 hours, but they've continued to play another 100 hours after that. So obviously not hating the game, but let's see what they say. Do you wish you had a game that combined all the worst parts of Starfield and Enshrouded into a single game? Then Nightingale is for you. Just take Starfield's procedurally generated planets, but boil out almost all of the storyline, quests and NPCs. And in No Man's Sky, as color palette. <laughs> Actually, that's a plus. To serve it on a plate of mixed fey and steampunk infused foam, this delightfully repetitive series of point of interest are sure to please the most unimaginative of you with the joy of seeing the same randomly placed structures dozens of times. But joy of joys, we've made it so that most of these point of interest are very tiny, often consisting of nothing more than a few random objects stuck together. So no need to worry about any in-depth explorations. This delight will be followed by an insipid building system of only the most basic building pieces in the genre that also uses the essence of enshrouded slash Valheim slash power world system of making pretty much the entire base content around just building a collection of workstations in order to build better workstations and equipment. Don't worry about decorating, as the options are very, very limited. Also, I hope you love loading screens, because every time you want or need to shift realms, prepare for a short wait while our server hamsters power up your shard. <laughs> we will also be serving a complimentary soup of non-respawning resources. But never fear. Just in case you thought we were doing this for immersive reasons, all the creatures in the world respawn as soon as you are out of sight of them. The weeds may not regrow, but that pack of wolves certainly will. Finally, enjoy our always online service with all the pleasures of downtimes, dropouts, and the tantalizing promise of future microtransactions, and perhaps even a devilish little battle boss, subject to our 10 cent overlords and how much we think we can get away with it. We hope you are enjoying playing our income stream the way we want you to, because with our always online model, there will be no mods or ability to edit servers to your particular desires. Note the dish of the day, the NPC assistant with an AI system designed to assist you is unavailable, but we will be offering it with a lobotomy source instead. God. So pretty funny, I, this one. There was a lot of them that just were talking about the always online. But this one seemed really funny. So it seems like the general gist of what I got from the game so far from the from the different reviews, no one is happy with the always online feature. Uh, they're not that happy with the actual gameplay. It seems like a lot of the quests are just story quests, uh, just fetch quests that pretend to be story quests, things like that, and the building system. There's quite a few and I just picked out some small ones because I wanted to talk about the actual devs response but just have a look at some of these some of these little reviews here. So just some short ones here that I'm going to rapid fire through but rubber banding in a single player game is a new one for me despite playing on a 4090 and a Ryzen 9 7950X it feels like I'm getting about 24 FPS thanks to the high ping. I was really looking forward to this game, but I can't play. But I can't play it if I have to connect to crap servers. Good job, devs. Playing solo, can't play because of a network error. Great. Waiting for a server. Bro, I got no friends. Let me play single player offline. Don't rub it in my face. <laughs> Must connect to a server to play. Enjoy your noise enjoy your nice 170 MS if you're not in NA. Hey, I'm Australian. I'm very used to that. Don't you worry. Do not purchase this game until they provide an offline version. Disconnected due to inactivity? I'm cooking dinner. <laughs> what is this, Diablo 3? Forcing solo players to connect to a server is just bad practice. If you wanted to play this as a fun solo survival, 
get ready to suffer through bad servers, high ping, even in a single player world. Why is this game always online? <laughs> so you can see people are just not impressed by this always online thing. But let's have a look at what the devs said about it and what their actual kind of plan was for this because they did actually say on on their website you can see this here co-op or solo adventure solo or play cooperatively with up to six players in an online shared world realmscape nightingale allows friends to join or visit each other's realms freely because it can be perilous to traverse the multi-realmic void alone you can interpret this two different ways Adventure solo or play cooperatively with up to six players in an online shared world realmscape. Or you can interpret it as adventure solo in an online shared world. So it's a little bit tricky here. I don't know if this is written properly, but you can interpret this two different ways. So following up from the co-op or, or solo question that, that's asked on the actual website of the game, They've got an FAQ section, and even in the FAQ, it's up to interpretation a little bit, because the question, does Nightingale have multiplayer? Answer, yes, you can play Nightingale solo or with friends. It doesn't really specify that it's going to be online only at all times. On the Steam page, it says that it requires an internet connection, but that you would require an internet connection to choose to play multiplayer. So there's not really anywhere that I could see noticeably for someone who was going to buy this game. Hey, you're going to be online at all times. And even in single player, you're going to be subject to ping, disconnections, and, uh, you know, server capacity. So they, I feel like they should have communicated it a little better, but they do address it, which is awesome. All right, so this is a message straight from the devs. And it says here, Nightingale, a message on offline play, and this is from the 23rd of February. Update. To address questions we've received, development on other updates, quality of life, new content, fixes, bugs, and other work, continues uninterrupted, and we'll have more news on those to share in the coming days. Hey Realm Walkers, we've seen a lot of discussion in recent days about our decision to make Nightingale online only at our early access release. We understand that this can be frustrating for a number of reasons. Our vision for the game since inception was to create an interconnected series of realms with the idea of allowing for cooperative exploration in mind, a universe bigger than a single realm or server. That meant we made our choice early in development between supporting co-op from day one or focusing development on an offline mode. Cooperative gameplay associated with having party members across multiple realms was the more technically challenging problem, and therefore, the one we chose to tackle first. Looking back on that decision, we misjudged what some of you were looking for in your experience. We are now prioritizing and developing an offline mode that we plan to release as soon as feasible. Keep an eye on our social channels and Discord for updates in the coming weeks alongside other things we're working on. Thank you to everyone who has stepped into the realms with us so far, the journey has just begun and we look forward to sharing it all with you, the Inflection team. Or Inflexion, I don't know how to say it. But this is very cool. They're taking the feedback, they're addressing it. Like, I can see where they're coming from. Thinking like, alright, this is the more difficult thing, let's get this out first, give it to the people, and then we'll work on it from there. I could totally understand them wanting to do that. Instead of, you know putting out the offline thing and saying, oh, multiplayer's coming soon, don't you worry, and then they don't know that it's going to take them a year and a half to get it sorted. I think they did it the sensible way. But, yeah, it looks like, unfortunately, lots of people did want that offline. Uh, no, good on them. They're doing a, a good service here for their, for their community that they're developing by just staying transparent, letting them know, and admitting things like... Instead of trying to blame it on something else, just being like, oh yeah, how bad, we misjudged it. So, no, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know anything about this developer at all. Is it another indie studio that's just delivering a banger or what? Because... Indie game dev's kind of on fire this year, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Sorry for the jump scare, I forgot. 
uh, yesterday to record an outro, actually. So I'm back the next day with a different shirt. Don't be alarmed. Uh, that was good fun to make. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Um, make sure you like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you have not already. Um, finding these funny reviews and stuff is actually pretty interesting. And now I think I'm steering towards like a news situation as well. Trying to keep up with these dev notes. Especially for new games that are releasing. So yeah, I might, I might be steering towards that a little bit as well as the silly reviews. So uh, yeah, subscribe if you like it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.